Without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker, Ms. Gillian Lai, today to share with us yeah, um, about um, working uh, uh, in, in this uh, private sector and also in this uh, nutrition and health supplement um, industry. Ms. Gillian is actually a, a very uh, seasoned nutritionist. She is now currently working yeah, in Bao Life Malaysia in the Ram Bahad, and she has a basic training in nutrition, graduating from uh, UPM yeah, in the year 2026. 20, 2006, right? right. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Gillian to share her career journey so far and also some of the uh, insight yeah, into what are the roles and responsibility of a nutritionist in the health supplement industry. Over to you, Ms. Gillian. Hey, hey there. Good morning, everyone. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to really uh, extend my gratitude uh, to uh, IMU and especially Dr. Macon for having me here today. Okay, so let me share my screen first. Okay, so today I will be sharing with you uh, regarding my experience as a nutritionist in the health supplement industry. All right, so these are the outline for my sharing session. So after today's session, probably you will know a little bit about myself because I will be sharing with you who am I. And then you also get to know my journey uh, when choosing the nutrition course back then in 2002, uh, when during the uh, course selection before entering the local university. And followed by, uh, you will also get to know where am I now or how am I doing as of today. And lastly, I also would like to highlight to all of you regarding some of the fundamental requirements uh, as a nutritionist in this industry. <clears throat> So before we really go into the sharing sessions, maybe let me have a, a, a chance to uh, briefly introduce myself. So my name is Jillian Lai. Yeah, the Jillian is actually the same name as Jillian Murray, if you are familiar with, uh, who I think who is one of the main cast in the Code Black uh, medical TV drama back then in uh, quite famous in 2018. So I'm actually born and raised in Bukit Matajam, which is uh, one of the main city in Penang. And I have completed my seven years of high school in SMJK DC and uh, followed by graduated from, from my bachelor and also my master degree in University Putra, Malaysia. Okay, so when I was preparing this deck of presentation, it also led me to uh, really having a chance to recall back what was happening back then in 2002, okay? Like most of the uh, students, after completing our high school, after uh, sitting, I mean, finishing the SPM and also the SPM, uh, SDPM. So we will usually come to one of the stage, uh, what's next for our, our course selection. Okay, so these are also, uh, this was also happening to me. I can still remember, uh, I have to choose some, some of the options that actually come forward to me. So one of it is actually uh, the medical degree that uh, I think my dad is quite uh, hoping so much. He, he was actually hoping so much to, for me to uh, really go and complete this uh, medical degree and become one of the doctor in our family. However, uh, that time, actually, I apologize to my dad that I talked, I friendly said, uh, me talk to him that I was not a good doctor candidate. Okay, then after that, uh, there's also one of the option uh, which also come into my list. Mm, the veterinary degree because I'm, I'm actually quite liking on small furry and cute animal. But uh, when really took into one step further to consider my, uh, my, my choice, I guess uh, I have one of the obstacles because I actually quite extremely phobia to reptile animal. So immediately the choice uh, slash from my, uh, my option. So I continue to explore some other option until uh, one of my seniors actually came back to our uh, high school that really uh, sharing with us her experience, her experience of uh, studying the nutrition course uh, in one of the local university. She actually enlightened me and also inspired me at that moment because uh, I still remember her statement is that, yeah, many, ma many students will actually opt for the medical degree because they are actually hoping after completing the, uh, the study, they can actually help uh, uh, the patient by treating the by by, by treating them, but uh, as a nutritionist back uh, me in the future, we also helping uh, the community after our our uh, 
of, of I mean after our our de uh, degree. So in the in we are helping people in the way that are uh, preventing disease to happen. So these are the, the statement that actually she uh, inspired me and, and I start to actually make up my mind to go for um, the nutrition course selection uh, for my local university entrance. So yeah, I have decided I have uh, make up the application and I got the offer okay, in UPM and I have go for the bachelor degree and uh, completed it in, in three years time. And then I guess I was lucky enough to have a uh, further opportunity uh, to continue further study and pursue a deeper interest in nutritional sciences, okay, for my master's degree. So up to this point, maybe some of you may think of, uh, okay, with these two degrees, uh, so what are the actually the career placement after that? So where am I currently? I'm actually currently working with uh, Mega BioLife. So in fact, I have been with BioLife Marketing Central since 2009. Okay, right after my master degree, uh, Viva Oral Examination. <clears throat> and as of today, I'm actually taking a great pride to say that uh, I'm growing together with this company. So let me introduce or briefly bring you through who is Mega BioLife, okay? And BioLife is a well-known health supplement uh, brand. If you are familiar with it, you can actually come across it in most of the leading pharmacy in our country. All right, so this brand, we are actually operating it since uh, 1990s and become parts of Mega Licenses uh, since 2000, November 2016, all right. And then Mega Licenses is our mother company, as I, as I mentioned just now, it is uh, one of the leading pharmaceutical and uh, um, which, are, which is actually headquartered in Bangkok. And it is uh, one of the uh, public listed company in Thailand since 2014. So this is how uh, BioLife grow in the last 30 years. So I would say that uh, so am I. On the very first day of 2009, uh, when I joined this company, I'm, I'm growing and still growing and learning together with this company. I'm actually feeling grateful that uh, I'm one of the nutritionists in this uh, company, Mega BioLife, as in this company, I'm actually not only given a uh, a lot of chances to practice what I have learned in the university, but I'm also blessed that I'm still able to serve and contribute as a community nutritionist even until today. So besides in this company, I've always uh, been provided with uh, opportunity to grow my career path. So I have started off as a customer care executive back then in uh, 2009, and then promoted to an area manager of customer care in 2012, okay? Then um, followed with a manager position in 2015. So three years later, uh, in 2018, I have been given more trust and also responsibility uh, to head another department other than customer care, uh, which is known as a, uh, product consultant management. So as of today, I'm leading nearly 80 uh, staff to work together to engage and also excel in their respective fields. Okay, you may come across with the term of customer care. Maybe you may be curious or wondering what is the customer care related to nutrition or the uh, nutritionist role. Okay, in Mega BioLife, the position is officially known or named as the uh, customer care, but in the customer care, all the members are actually pra the practicing nutritionists who are responsible in, first of all, uh, managing the consumer nutrition and digital education. They are the uh, so-called the consultant and or the nutritional advisor to provide those professional advice to the uh, to our client or to the uh, community. Secondly, is to providing um, the nutritional marketing training to our um, business partner, such as uh, the pharmacies, the retailer, uh, sales associate, doctor, or sometimes even nurses. Okay, other than that, they are also in charge in preparing the scientific advertorial, such as uh, preparing those um, evidence-based write-up or the detailing aid for our sales team to really uh, use them when they are doing their proposal detailing to the uh, clients. And lastly, is uh, to handle the customer hotline assistant. Okay, we are the one that uh, helps to answer 
the, our client or the consumer, the end consumer curious about the product as well as about their health and nutritional status. So our nutritionists are working into the local community and also the neighborhood to really uh, care for their wellness by providing them the correct and also the evidence-based nutritional knowledge or information for them to really taking charge of their own well-being. Okay, other than that, apart from that, the nutritionists in our company also become the educator in some of, of the uh, so-called creative way. Sometimes they will uh, have the opportunity to be appear on the screen to share some health knowledge uh, to the public. Okay, so for example, sometimes they need to be uh, appear on the so-called webinar, or even sometimes they will be uh, on the live stream or the live show. In other occasions, they are also responsible to produce some educational or informative materials to be shared on the digital platforms. All right, so um, before I come to the end of my sharing session, because just now what I, uh, I was sharing was the experience and also the basic uh, so-called the role and responsibility of nutritionists in Mega Biolife. Okay, so one of the take home message that I would like to share with all of you is that uh, the basic requirement or the fundamental requirement, or I will uh, normally known as uh, the gems uh, of a nutritionist uh, in this health, in, uh, health supplement industry. There are three of them that I think it is quite essential or important uh, to become a nutritionist in this uh, industry. The very first one to, is to uphold the professionalism uh, because as a nutritionist, we need to know how to deal between our company businesses and also to provide the professional advice to our client or to our customer. Secondly, is to equip ourselves uh, with a good interpersonal and also communication skill. Uh, as it is because as a nutritionist, this is the basic requirement for us. Uh, we, we are required to actively communicate uh, with our client, with our customer, uh, to, to inform them the correct information or the knowledge for them um, to really start to practicing the, the so-called healthy lifestyle. Because sometimes we, uh, we, we, we actually know how to read those technical terms from the scientific platform. But however, these scientific, uh, these scientific terms or, or, or the technical terms is not really um, well informed to the public or to the uh, general population. So nutritionists will become a medium for them to translate this message uh, to the community. So to let them know the basic, uh, the, the main uh, point for the community to understand uh, the real message behind. And the third one is to passionate uh, to lead. Okay, as a nutritionist in this context is uh, we need to continuously to educate and also advocate the healthy lifestyle. Because in, in some occasion, uh, even though we have already provided the consultation to the population, but uh, some of the people may be not uh, ready to change uh, the lifestyle that we recommended to them. So as a nutritionist, we, we should have the uh, so-called the passion and also the patient to continuously and also consistently uh, to pass the correct message to them. So that at the end of the, I mean, in, in one day, when they realize the benefit of the so-called the, rec uh, the recommendation, they will start to practicing it. Okay, I would like to end my session uh, with one of the uh, so-called the quote from Nelson Mandela, may your choices reflect your hope, but not your fear. So in, the, in this context, uh, what Nelson Mandela wants want us to know is that uh, once you have made up your mind, uh, regard, I mean, in your course selection, you have already took up your, uh, make up the decision to go for it. But, um, just go with the flow and join the journey. And then don't be afraid of uh, any failure that may or may not be happened. Okay, because uh, just uh, the, the, the decision we have made, we need to really go and join it. Then you will be benefited throughout the journey. Okay, and one last thought uh, that uh, I think I, it, this is my personal thought. Because I think that a career as a nutritionist, uh, perhaps I, I think it is not as popular as doctors, pharmacists, uh, those uh, lawyer or accountant that general population may, may think of. But believe me or not, um, nutritionists will be an important role 
in empowering our community, okay? Uh, in um, so-called the fundamental right to live a healthy lifestyle uh, as long as they live in many, many years to come, all right? So mm, uh, up to this point, maybe some of you may have the uh, so-called the wonders or, or wondering how many industry or how many companies that actually really look for nutritionists or really recruit the nutritionists uh, into their company, okay? Uh, for this question, I actually do not have a definite answer because um, I think only time will tell us, but at least uh, Mega Biolife is proactively expanding and also recruiting nutritionists. Uh, like currently, we actually having uh, active hiring uh, the, uh, nutritionists to fill up some of the position in our company. Okay, so if let's say you have any connection, friends or siblings or cousin who are actually graduate from the uh, nutrition background and keen to become a nutritionist in uh, this health supplement industry like Mega Bio Life, perhaps you may pass this message to them. You can actually ask them to send in their application and also their resume to my email, as you can see on the screen. All right, so uh, that's all. Wish you all a happy weekend and also thanks for your time uh, to, for being here with me again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jillian. What a wonderful insight yeah, uh, of the roles and responsibilities. And she actually gave um, the audience some, uh, you know, some, some um, can I say prediction that how important the position is going to be. Yeah? So um, I think uh, Mega Bio Life uh, uh, has been a very good partner with IMU. Uh, they also provide our students yeah, some uh, internship opportunity that uh, we are very glad and very helpful. And the students have been sharing that they have wonderful uh, learning experience yeah, with the team. Thank you so much, Ms. Jillian. Um, Keep the questions coming, yeah. Type uh, your question in the Q&A box, then we will um, attempt to answer uh, all of the questions at the end of the session. So our, thank you, Ms. Jillian. Okay, our second speaker, we have Mr. Ng Chikai. Yeah, uh, Mr. Ng Chikai also uh, uh, a nutritionist by training, yeah. He received his uh, Master of Health Sciences, Public Health Nutrition uh, in the year 2020. And he is now uh, a, a very prominent and orang kuat, uh, the uh, slango, you know, uh, as a senior assistant director for nutrition. Yeah. So he's actively involved in uh, states and many national community nutrition and health promotion programs. Yeah. Mr. Ng believes that yeah, nutrition leadership at various levels at the community settings. He often shares his international experience to inspire the young leaders of tomorrow. Can I pass the platform to you, Mr. Ng? Over to you. Sure, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Megan. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me share my screen. Um, before I start, I would like to thank um, IMU, especially Dr. Megan, um, who, uh, who invited me uh, um, for, for this um, sharing session. Okay, so what I'm going to um, share Today is actually um uh I chose this title I chosen this title nutrition leadership in the community because um as a nutrition officer um serving the Ministry of Health um we are act we are actually um focusing on uh the, the community works so like what been introduced just now my name Ng Chi Kai and also I'm I'm currently serving the um, Selangor State Health Department, um, the branch of Ministry of Health in Selangor State. So um, what I'm going to talk today is about my community community nutritionist journey. Um, then um, I will be touching a little bit on the career progression of a nutrition officer and also um, uh, touch a little bit on a life health professional act 2016 or, or better known as act 774 okay um next um the beginning of my um community nutritionist journey actually started 2003 um when i joined the bachelor of science 
a Bachelor of Science Nutrition and Community Health. Um, if 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 you you are aware, I'm actually same batch with Miss Gillian just now. So we were we were the classmate in the same course. Um, um, Gillian uh, mentioned just uh, Gillian, Gillian shared just now. It, initially, she wanted to uh, she she is aimed to be a doctor and other profession, but end up with nutrition. And um, but for me, it's slightly different. Um, uh, in fact, this nutrition and community health is was my first choice when I when I when I applied for my um, um, uh, bachelor degree. Uh, uh, don't ask me why that is my first choice um, because because I uh, I also don't know why I just put that as my first choice, right? So after three years of degree, I actually started my um, uh, my career or my first job. Um, as a management trainee, come nutritionist with um, a, a very reputed um, chain pharmacy in the country, one of the largest, um, which uh, I, I believe most of us know it, Guardian Pharmacy. Um, uh, after nine months as a management trainee, I was promoted to be a so-called executive in charge, come nutritionist. Executive in charge um, means um, it's, it's equivalent to the store manager, but the company is very smart. They don't, they don't want you to pay you the store manager salary. So they put you under this executive in charge. So um, that's, that's the corporate tra uh, trick. And um, in, uh, during my, my, my time with Guardian Pharmacy, I actually learned a lot about the products, including BioLife. BioLife, in fact, is one of the most um, famous uh, supplements brand um, selling in Guardian Pharmacy until today, I believe. So um, I, I serve Guardian Pharmacy um, uh, for more than one year, one, one, one and a half year, I believe. Um, I started um, in middle of 2006, immediately after my graduation, and I left Guardian end of um, 2007, and yeah, joined uh, joined the public service as a nutritionist officer. And my first posting is in Johor, uh, a state that I never thought of. I'm from Selangor, like what um, Dr. Megan introduced just now. Um, I uh, when I when I get the public service offer, I I start to imagine I might be posted in Sabah, Sarawak, or Kelantan, Terengganu, but I never thought of Johor, and I end up I I, I end up with, in Johor lah, and I based in Klang District Health Office. I was the the first um, nutrition officer in the office. Uh, I still re remember when. My first day reporting duty to the um, district health officer, um, my boss actually said, um, I actually have no idea what you are supposed to do here. You are the first one we have, so you do whatever you like, whatever you need to do. So uh, 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 a new office, as a, a new officer, um, uh, uh, a very, very um, young nutritionist, I actually um, struggle a little bit, but luckily I have some seniors to refer um, in JB in the Johor State. So um, do it, um, when when I base in the, um, Kuang District Health Office, um, my responsibility or my job scope is mainly focused on uh, more on community projects like um, what I show in the photo, like some cooking demonstration, conduct exhibitions, um, giving talks and do some data collection or do some survey in school or in the community. Um, besides that, um, we are also uh, meeting the patient, um, um, giving one-to-one um, -one counseling on nutrition, on their diets, in the clinics, and a lot more. Um, I, I, I don't think I can explain everything I do uh, in the public service within the sh this short time, okay? Let's us um, pro proceed.
Um, um, somewhere around September 2009, after one and one year plus, I served Johor. I actually um, transferred myself um, to Putrajaya, serving as um, base in Nutrition Division, Ministry of Health Malaysia. This is the headquarter. This is where um, the, the the highest nutritionist. Um, based here, la, the, the, which is the, the director of nutrition division. So um, we have we, we have a, a, a number or a quite good number of nutritionists serving here, and I was one of them. Um, in fact, till now, this is still the place I serve longest um, um, in, in my um, community, community nutritionist journey. So when I first joining nutrition division, I was given um, the portfolio of um, National Plan of Action for Nutrition Malaysia, or, or that well known as NPAN. Um, this, this is the highest um, policy in the country that, um, that um, all, we all nutrition, uh, nutritionists um, uh, refer to. This is the master plan, the blueprint, whatever you want to call it. So um, I, I, was, I was still young, I was still um, lack of experience, but, but when joined the nutrition division, um, working together with the seniors and looking at the masterpiece of um, nutrition plan in the country, I pick up a lot. That is totally different from what I experienced in um, Johor. Because when, when working in, uh, at the district level, um, I'm, I'm working more on implementation, um, uh, intervention kind of um, jobs. But when, when working at nutrition division, the ministry level, um, I'm focusing more on planning and development. Okay, so um, along the way, I actually involved in um, the, the development of Malaysian Dietary Guidelines 2000, uh, 2010 and 2020. Um, I, 2020, I'm not involved because I left the ministry already. Okay, um, I was uh, the secretary for technical working group for nutrition research. So um, uh, after a few years, when I start to get bored of um, doing MPANs, doing all the policy, I, I actually uh, have the opportunity to, to have some internal transfer within the division to switch the portfolio. Because in nutrition division, we have a lot of nutritionists, so um, each of us will have our own portfolio to handle. We don't need to do everything one shot. So after that, I actually handled the healthy um, cafeteria recognition program, which I believe IMU Cafe is also um, recognized by this cafeteria Sehat, and also the, uh, the, another recognition program, which call it BEST, Berse, Selamat, dan Sehat. Um, so I handled those two portfolio until I left um, Nutrition Division on 2016. Okay. So 2016, um, January, I joined Selangor State Health Department. It's actually a transfer. Um, um, when I start joining here, I, I, I continue doing the cafeteria Sehat and also the best for Selangor State. Before that, I was doing it at, I was, I was doing it at national level. Now I'm fo more focusing on the at the state level. So um, I uh, until 2019, basically I I I handled that and also the um, program pemulihan kanak-kanak kekurangan zat makanan or, or better known as PPKZM or food basket program because under this program. Um, um, we identify those uh, undernourished children from um, poor family and we every month we will pro provide the children with food basket and the food basket can be um, the raw food item or can be the milk powder um, it's up to um, uh, 
the uh, the request from the patient. So um, um, basically, these two was my main portfolio from year 2016 until 2019, and um, at the same time, I also uh, venture in community or, or or helping in community sehat perkasa negara COSPAN. This is a program um, which um, we reach out to the community uh, and um, we do, uh, we, 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 the, main, the main component in this cost plan is actually um, health screening because we want as much as uh, we can to, to screen the um, community on the NCD risk. And on top of the screening, um, we have different programs, depends on the community needs. Lah. And um, nutrition or weight management program is one of them. Okay, um, 2019, um, oh, okay, before that, um, this, these are some photo snapshot that what, uh, what I did uh, when I was in Selangor from 2016 to 2019, including um, the photo on the top left, um, I went to um, Kedah Medical Center in Alosta, helped them in the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative Assessment because I'm one of the national assessor for this Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. Um, on the top right is actually a group photo after a healthy shopping tour in um, Tesco, Putraj uh, IOI City Mall, Putrajaya, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is, if not mistaken, this is during the um, Nutrition Month Malaysia, and definitely the photos are, uh, at the bottom are the talks, the exhibition, group counseling, and on, on the bottom right um, is a photo that I um, I was invited to a TV program, a Mandarin TV program uh, on, on 8 TV, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so um, as a community nutritionist, especially those who are working with the Ministry of Health, um, from time to time, we'll, we will be invited to appear in the media, the main media. And um, definitely after the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we, uh, we appear ourselves in the social media, yeah. All right, so in 2019, um, I actually have um, an opportunity to further my study. Um, I actually took a Master of Health Sciences, Public Health Nutrition um, with uh, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM. Um, this is a, a, a one year, um, fully coursework program, um, but we need to do a mini uh, thesis at the end of the study. And my, um, my further, this further study is fully sponsored by the Ministry of Health because I obtained the scholarship and my, my salary is still uh, paid on time um, uh, uh, during my study period. So I actually getting my salary and my, all my tuition fee are paid off by the Ministry of Health. This is one of the, the, the significant benefit I can think of when we are a public servant, okay? So um, I've, um, um, I'm actually, uh, I, I consider myself quite lucky because um, when I started my master's study, um, I have the opportunity to, to really like, like go back to uh, a university student time. I need to wake up early morning, catch up the train, go to campus and, and uh, join the lecture. Um, after that, I need to do group discussion with my classmate and all that. But um, when, when, we, uh, when I start entering um, second semester of the study, um, um, COVID-19 hits Malaysia. So um, uh, from second semester onwards, uh, we actually switch all the, the, the coursework to online and all that. So during, although, although it's like uh, what, only one year master study, I actually um, experienced two different kind of um, delivery method, two different kind of study environment. 
So um, I joined. I, I I joined back my my previous um, office, Selangor State Health Department, immediately after my study, um, and until now I'm still there. Um, but uh, when I when I start joining back um, September two thousand twenty. Um, I actually, uh, my, my boss actually decided to have to switch some portfolio among ourselves in, 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 in Slangor State Health Department. So I actually dropped the healthy cafeteria, dropped the best, um, and I start venturing into more into breastfeeding, like baby friendly hospitals, um, baby friendly clinics, breastfeeding promotions and all that. Um, I start venturing in school nutrition programs, including like um, 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 monitoring the, uh, the food that the school canteen selling, um, um, including um, some intervention program to the school um, children's nutrition health and all that. But the food basket program is still under me. Um, I still carry on on that. And um, one new one is actually another recognition program called My Meals um, with the hashtag Sedap Sehat dan Jimat. Um, it's actually another recognition program by Ministry of Health to the, to the caterer, to the cafe or to the restaurant to highlight um, a, 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 a balanced um, meals with a reasonable price. So if you wish to know more, you can uh, visit the nutrition division website. Um, you can you can you can read more about what is my meals. Okay. Um, so after COVID nineteen pandemic, um, um, we as community nutritionists, we 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 can't stop our journey to reach out to the community. We still need to find ways, although we have MCOs, we, we need to maintain social distancing, we cannot group the people together. So we, we come, our team in Slangor actually come up with a lot of um, new approach. Like um, we, uh, on the top left, um, we have some QR code for breastfeeding education. Those days um, before COVID, um, our breastfeeding education is always face to face. The nurses, the nutritionists in the clinic will group the mother together and start giving them breastfeeding education. But after COVID, we can't do that, so we have to we have to make use the the technologies. Um, we we uh, we we let the patient scan the QR code, assess the information, and answer some questions to make sure that they are uh, they are understanding lah. Okay, on on the second photo beside uh, the on uh, the second photo is actually a photo when a nutritionist, my colleague, um, giving online or or, or virtual conference consultation or counseling to undernourished children and their parents. Okay, because um, before this, all those um, Bako Makanan recipients, they need to attend to the clinic for the uh, anthropometry assessment and also um, 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 counseling session. But because of COVID, then we have to do it virtually. And a few photos on the right is actually a, a healthy, shopping healthy shopping tour virtually. Only the, the nutritionist attended physically to the shopping um, to the grocery store. Um, the other participants are actually viewing from their, their site. Um, you, if not mistaken, they are using Zoom that time. Okay. Um, and that, yeah, definitely we have a lot of webinar, we have a lot of FB live sessions and all that. So um, that's conclude my journey so far as a community nutritionist. Um, I believe I still have a long way to go. I still need to serve another 20 years before I can retire. Um, so next, I will I will be touching a little bit on um, the what what, what the, the career prospect as a nutrition nutrition officer in the public service. 
So the official position title is actually Pegawai Science Pemakanan, or, or in English, we used to say uh, Nutrition Officer, okay, or Nutrition Science Officer kind of things. So um, unfortunately, this position is only a close position within Ministry of Health. We can't find any other um, nutrition officer in other ministry. So how I move around um, within the service also within Ministry of Health only. So the appointment grade is actually C41. Um, the basic requirement is a, a, a bachelor degree um, in nutrition. Um, so the first appointment is always 41. And um, the promotion grade is actually 44, like where I'm in, I'm in now, I'm a 44 officer. Um, then other promotion grade is like 48, 52, 54, and the highest so far is Jusasi, which is our director of nutrition division. Only one person in the country. Um, the salary for C41, the, 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 the minimum salary is actually 2,300, the basic salary, and the maximum can reach up to 9,600. Okay, yearly increment uh, is actually 225 for C41. For the other grade, the yearly increment are different. Okay, um, and for a C41, um, you will receive a fixed allowance from 650 to 800, depends on where you are serving. If you are serving at urban area, you are getting 800. When you are serving at rural area, you might only get 650. So if you need to know further about these kind of things, um, you can always vis visit the um, Surohan Jaya Prahimatan Awam website, which I shared uh, uh, on the bottom of the slide. Okay, um, next, um, some opportunities as a nutrition officer or as a public servant. Um, I actually um, very fortunate to have opportunity to, uh, to join a few uh, international trainings or events. Um, like what I show on the top on, uh, on the top is actually a regional nutrition cluster coordinators training in Bangkok, Thailand. I went uh, in 2015. So the photo is actually the, 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 the training participants from the region. Um, um, some I'm still keeping contact, especially the, 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 the dark guy in um, orange or yellow t-shirt besides me. Okay, um, he will send me, drop me some message from time to time actually. So on the bottom is actually another program in um, Japan. Um, uh, knowledge core creation program, young leaders, lifestyle related um, diseases prevention course. So this is a photo of the participants when we do courtesy visit to the mayor of the city we visited. Okay, so we, because, because we want to show our, our culture, so all of us are in the party. All right, so um, these um, training um, or course opportunities are, are fully sponsored um, either by the government or by um, the Japan one is actually fully sponsored by JICA, uh, 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 an organization um, uh, established by Japan government or sponsored by Japan government uh, in uh, all different countries outside the Japan. Okay, so um, this is a uh, Malaysian Nutrition Leadership Program, or better known as my NLP, is a brainchild by Nutrition Society of Malaysia. Um, the first um, my NLP is actually on two thousand seventeen. Um, the picture I show was my participation. This this was my group um, during the first my NLP. After that. Um, I, I was uh, appointed to the my NLP um, technical committee because I was the alumni. Um, so, so they appointed me to join the team to, to, to start to plan and organize um, 
the second my NLP. But unfortunately, um, COVID-19 um, hit us. Um, we can't actually carry out that. So um, along the way, we we our our technical uh, committee actually uh, worked out a lot of different webinar, um, in, uh, including uh, like leadership um, kind of trainings uh, and nutrition career talk. Um, we invited um, uh, well-known um, nutritionists from different sectors um, to give a um, career talk for um, final year students, fresh graduates, and also postgraduate students. So the poster, I actually shared a, a few examples there. So um, uh, my MLP program is still ongoing. Um, uh, stay tuned with um, Nutrition Society of Malaysia. Um, you will you will get to know more um, program and um, we are going to have the Southeast Asia Regional Nutrition Leadership Program um, somewhere in October this year later yeah so stay tuned with us um, the Southeast Asia Nutrition Leadership Program is actually open for registration eh? so if you are interested if you are uh, uh, you are already a nutritionist please go ahead for that. Um, next is actually another another very meaningful program I joined. Um, probably not 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 directly um, be, uh, uh, re related as I'm a nutritionist or I'm a public servant, but um, I believe um, uh, I I share this because I I wish our uh, future nutritionists or our young people. Um, can take this uh, is aware of this kind of opportunity. This is a Southeast a uh, young Southeast Asia leaders um, initiative, or uh, better known as YCLE. Um, I joined the professional fellows program um, on spring two thousand fifteen. I actually traveled to US, stay there for six weeks, and um, um, uh, during my visit there, I, uh, our group was actually invited by the President of United States to the White House. So the, 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 the photo with the President of United States that time, um, this is in the White House. Okay, so um, YCLE um, offers actually different types of um, programs. Professional Fellows Program uh, for those um, young leaders um, age from 25 to 35. Okay, um, you must be uh, working, have some working experience and all that. But um, YCLE also offered like um, a, uh, academic fellows program, those they are targeting on undergraduate students, second year and above. So um, please don't miss this kind of opportunity. Um, and YCLE is still ongoing. Um, final part of my sharing is about the Ally Health Professional Act 2016, or better known as Act 774. This is um, this act actually covering um, of only a few matters. Uh, one of them is the establishment of the Malaysian Ally Health Professionals Council. Um, means we, uh, under the act, this council has to be formed. And this council have uh, 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 quite uh, significant authorities and power to, to regulate the law um, regarding ally health professionals. And um, second thing, this act actually regulated the registration of ally health practitioners. Um, um, so all the ally health pro practitioners under this act need to register with the registrar. The registrar will be formed under the council, okay? And this act also regulate allied health professional practices and related matters, like our code of conduct, do and don'ts, um, and all that. So this act actually regulating 16 professionals, including nutritionists and also dietitian. Nutritionists and dietitian are our, uh, we, are, we are like our siblings. Okay, um, um, these 16 professions are, are revised on 24th March 2022, recently. 
Before that, we have 24 professions. But along the way, where we um, maybe maybe the council feels that it's too reluctant to have so many professions, so they actually combine some of the profession. So we, we are not missing out the profession, but we actually combine, become 16 on the list. And nutritionist is one of them. So in, in other words, nutritionist, we are under um, the regulation of this AHP Act 2016. So, um, under the Act, the definition of nutritionist is actually an individual who is trained and registered as a nutritionist to advocate and promote nutrition well-being, like what I am doing, like what Gillian is doing, of an individual and population, as well as to prevent and control nutrition-related diseases of various target groups at different settings and levels through policies and regulations. Okay, policies and regulation I did in um, nutrition division. Education, like what the next speaker, um, Dr. Signa, he, um, she, she is in the acad academia. Um, education, yes, community nutritionists like me and Gillian also doing that. Training, we train the nurses, we train other healthcare professionals. Assessment and monitoring of nutrition status. We conduct survey, we conduct studies. University do that, Ministry of Health doing that. Carrying out nutrition intervention. Yes, definitely community nutritionists doing that. Consultancy, maybe those more senior nutritionists in the country, they will do that. Research and development. Every nutritionist has to do that. So um, basically our scope is very wide and depends on your personal interest, which you, you, you want to go more, um, you can actually choose your workplace later. Okay, I think that's conclude my sharing today. Um, I welcome questions. Thank you. Dr. Megan, over back to you. Thank you, Mr. Ng. What a wonderful and 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 interesting journey yeah though you say you have 20 years to go you know <laughs> sounded that wow you have accomplished so much yeah, over the last few years thank you thank you for uh, again yeah uh, for despite your busy schedule that to, to join us and and you know to be here to inspire the young leaders of tomorrow and the young nutritionists of tomorrow dr um uh, Mr. Ng is actually very busy. He just finished, uh, uh, you know, completed, I'm not sure whether it's a completion of exercise uh, on evaluation of a baby-friendly hospital yesterday. So he's uh, very kind uh, to, to take his uh, uh, rest day to be with here, uh, us today. Thank you so much again. We shall now welcome our third speaker, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Snegda Misra. Uh, welcome, Dr. Snegda. Dr. Snegda is a faculty within the Division of Nutrition and, uh, and, and Dietetics uh, in the International Medical University. So he has, uh, she has been in uh, academia yeah, for the past almost 30 years. Okay. Um, and she has been a, a community a researcher, research mentor, and has actually um, um, over the years, yeah, over the last 30 years, portrayed and demonstrated her leadership in nutrition. She is a very active um, researcher engaging in improving the life of community through healthy lifestyles programs. Yeah. This passion has led her to achieve a coveted silver award on partnership with industry at the 9th Annual Global CSR Summit and Awards and the Global Good Governance Awards 2017 Malaysia. Besides that, she has also received the Leadership in Community Service in the year 2017 and Partnership Excellence in Community Service year 2020. Uh, 21 awards from International Medical University. Uh, let's put our hands together to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Snigdam Misra. Over to you, Dr. Snigdam. Thank you very much, uh, Megan, uh, for this uh, kind introduction. Um, please uh, let me know if my slides are visible to all of you. Is it visible? Yes, Dr. Snigdam, we can see Thank your slide. You. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And I should first thank my previous uh, speakers, Ms. Jillian and uh, Mr. Chikai, for making my work very, very easy. 
you see, you have seen two angles of where nutrition plays a very, very important role. First, Ms. Gillian um, uh, emphasized on how nutritionists play a very, very important role in the supplement industry. In the second, uh, speaker, the second speaker, Mr. Chikai, also gave you a very broad perspective of how nutritionists play a role, play different roles under one title. So the role and the scope of nutritionists can be very wide and can be very diverse. So what I'm going to bring you uh, forward is the academic side of nutritionists. So how do the academia or the, how does the nutritionists from the academia um, uh, co collaborate and partner with every other organization or institution, be it governmental, be it non-governmental, or be it industry as a stakeholder for a better cause. So I would like to first start with the younger um, age group. We as nutritionists step up the effective school health and the nutrition programs. So this again is a partnership with the school. So we being the technical expert on how to prevent diseases or conditions right from the get-go. We don't wait until the disease comes and attacks people. So we want to bring the people on board for a healthier lifestyle to propel a, a good, healthy future for the young children at the get-go. So here what we do is we generally look into what goes into a school lunch, what goes into a school cafeteria in general. In some schools, there are provisions for school lunches. In some schools, there, there are provisions for cafeteria. As Mr. Chikai mentioned, that they also award a healthy cafeteria. And I knew cafeteria is one of the best now, which has been awarded by best as, uh, the best and the healthy cafeteria as well. So the cafeteria is not only to be enforced, a healthy cafeteria is not only to be enforced at the school level alone, but also on work sites and which IMU also leads this in this perspective. So when we look into what goes into a school um, lunch, we first go into the school as nutritionists, do some kind of assessments where you can see here the, the students, the nutrition student uh, measure the growth pattern of the children. And these are kindergarten children um, in Klang. And we have been actually following up with these children for the past four years continuously. So this is not only to monitor their growth pattern, but also to monitor their healthy lifestyle. So you can see our students also provide nutrition education to these youngsters. Now, when we talk of education, it's, it's a very big word for these young school children who are just going as kindergartners. So the nutritionists here are tweaking their communication skills and also they are trying to see how to pass on the message in a very lucid and fluid manner to the young children so that they can carry and, and, and imbibe this message and practice on their own along with their family members. So these are our students who have been going to these schools regularly and they are following up with the, not only with the lunch pattern or the dietary pattern of the young children here, but also the education, uh, nutrition education of the children. You can also see them that they are um, undergoing the routine monitoring measurement of height and weight. And this is for them to ensure that their growth is adequate at this particular point of time. Now, beyond this, the nutritionists also go to the parent teachers group of the same school in order to educate the parents on proper lifestyle, not only for their children, but also for themselves. You see, fam family is the first school of a child. So whatever the child learns from the family, that is what is going to be imbibed by the child. So it is always better to train the roots and then the fruits. So we train uh, as nutritionists, we train the parents and the teachers at the school in order to ensure that they have an optimum lifestyle as well as healthy eating patterns embedded into their child's nurture. Now, this is another uh, partnership with the community. Now, this partnership was done on a project called as the first 1000 days of life. This was a collaborative effort 
So you can see that we went down here to the community here, and this community is uh, at the Kota Damansara, one of the PPR flats. And where, and this was also undertaken during the peak COVID time. Believe it or not, during 2020, uh, June, July, August, when um, we were all in the peak COVID time, uh, there was a call from the community on the health of the pregnant mothers as well as the lactating mothers. So also it impacted the younger children. So we, uh, we took a step forward, taking special permission to go down to the community and help them out along with the working together with the other community partners. And that's why I mentioned collaboration. So we as nutritionists cannot work in silo. We have to work with multiple partners and engage the community leaders as well as the community. As you can see here that this project was implemented by one of the uh, NGOs, which is the Community Transformative Initiative and they gave us a call when they knew that the community wanted to seek help on the nutrition perspectives. Apart from that, we were supported by other partners like East Spring Investment and Prudence Foundation. At the same time, we also had Grace Market as the food supplier partner. And then IMU came in to give them the education as well as become the nutrition advisor for 2020 until 2022. So you must be wondering, who is this community? Where is this community? Actually, this community belongs to the, was in the PPR flats, if some of you are aware of it. So the major population was the B40 population and they were in dire need of help. So that's where we step in beyond boundaries. Now you may be surprised when the MCO was on, and there were strict movement, movement control orders, how did we manage to reach the community? Well, that is interesting. We work beyond our expectations, beyond our limits, because our goal is only one, to bring a favorable change in the community. When help was warranted at the community, if we don't step in, what's the point in being a healthcare worker? So we did seek permission from the, uh, uh, from the required authorities to travel down to the community at Kota Damansara and help them out over the period of um, those next six months. And it still continues until today. Now, why does it continue until today? Now there's no more COVID, so there shouldn't be any uh, more emergencies. But we were amazed the, about the community response. The community uh, uh, responded by requesting the other NGOs on the ground to ask us to come back and continue the program as far as practicable. That's why we, our presence in that community still continues. So what did we do in that community is similar to other communities as well. We have currently another partnership with YTL Foundation. I'm sure you must be familiar with YTL Industries. So they have a foundation who not only helped us to, uh, to uh, it was a mutual uh, uh, collaboration where they helped us to um, build capacity of a nutritionist in the community. So they're supporting our master's student in order to work for the community. Again, this is a project which is on pregnant mothers. And you can see one of our students uh, who is I think amongst our audience is also a part of it even before she joins our course because she seems to see a value in this course and she requested if she could join uh, the community and learn more about nutrition so that it will help her in her career progression as well. And this is our master's student who has started off with a research student, uh, as a research student. Now in the same community, what do we do? We also hold certain engagement with the community moms, the pregnant mothers, the lactating mothers, and even the mothers of young children. We train them how to prepare healthy breakfast. We offer a certain um, educational materials. We offer them recipes in order to prepare even low cost menu. Now you see these days, the Facebook and other social media sites 
are loaded with lots of nutrition advice. Do we filter these advice? No. Sometimes somebody proposes that, oh, you eat this, you eat chia seeds, for example. You take flax seeds, it helps you with these, these, these conditions. Have we considered the cost? If it comes to a B40 family, do you think that it would be within their affordable means? It may not be. So this is where the nutritionist should play a major role. You need to translate the science and the, uh, con uh, translate into an application which can be embraced by that particular community depending upon their socioeconomic strata. These days, you also find multiple kinds of foods being sold. Some uh, promote that, okay, if you take this food, you don't need to, you, need, you can skip your breakfast. For example, if you take this packet, oh, you, your blood sugar will lower. If you take uh, another uh, food, which is just two, two um, teaspoons, uh, mix it in water, you will not gain weight. Now, these are certain things which we as nutritionists coming with a science background and a proper evidence-based practice should help to nullify these kind of claims. And that is where it is very important that we need to go down to the community to educate them what is best for them, how they can minimize their cost, yet they can provide a healthy meal on the table. So that's where we, have, we partner with YTL Foundation again to nurture the young mothers in order uh, to help them to bring up their little ones. Now, this is the competition that I was mentioning about. So what we did was we actually gave them the food ingredients. Then we asked them that um, you have to look into the cost considerations for a family of four or a family of five, and how can you prepare a healthy breakfast? So you can see the mothers and uh, some of the moms have also encouraged their little ones to join them in order to prepare the breakfast. So this is a um, scenario of preparing a healthy breakfast competition within the community. Now, this is again done in order to empower the community. It is not that we are going to provide them breakfast all the time, but we are trying to engage with them to show how to do it. Knowledge is available everywhere, but sometimes when it comes to application, people fail. So we are trying to tell them with a, with a cheaper initiative or a cheaper alternative, you still can prepare a healthier breakfast. Now we have been looking at pregnant mothers. We looked at the younger children. There has been some activities on young adolescents where we have also visited school, but we should not forget the golden years of life, which is the elderly. We did have a couple of partnerships with the industry wherein they supported our projects for nutrition for the elderly. And believe it or not, the results were so amazing and astonishing that this industry supported for this uh, elderly homes project for a period of four years. So we shouldn't ignore any member in this society. Every single member in this society has an equal access to good health and nutrition. So we do not uh, discriminate either between age groups, between ethnic groups, or within any nationalities once we go into the community. So this is what we did in the elderly community. We measured uh, their body measurements. We also had a, a look at their blood glucose levels. We also looked into some other biochemical uh, parameters. Even so much so we looked into the, uh, the uh, consistency of the stools because you know, in elderly as you grow old, there are two major challenges. One now of the challenges that uh, normally the elderly in that particular home complain was that they are unable to have a good taste of the food. And uh, some of them also complained about constipation. So what we do is not what we want. We always go to the community, do a needs assessment. What does the community need? Where is the gap that help has to go in? So we first analyze what is the help needed? And accordingly, we tailor our services to them. So what we do also is we check their blood glucose. You can see our 
faculty also gets very actively engaged in all these activities along with the students. Now, why do we bring in students? Because this is a good learning point for the students and faculty students equally are responsible for the overall healthcare of the elderly. So what we did also was after we looked into their uh, needs, some of them complained that the food that is being cooked by the uh, uh, cook at their homes wasn't tasty. And we also observed that they have been uh, throwing away the vegetables. They do not like to eat vegetables. They took limited amounts of fruits, but the fruits which had very high um, uh, sugars they were very fond of that because that stimulated their taste buds. So what we did was we went down to the ground again. Instead of advising the elderly what to eat and what not to eat, we had a bottoms up approach, wherein we started training the cooks to prepare a balanced and healthy meal and also to prepare an appropriate texture for that is um, conducive for the elderly because you know the, some of the elderly did not have good dentition they did not have good teeth some of the teeth were missing and they could not even help to chew the vegetables and that was one of the reasons we realized they threw away the vegetables because the vegetables were a bit firm so what we trained the cook was we took a double pronged approach here we trained the cooks um, in cutting the, starting from cutting the vegetables to uh, the size of the vegetables, how to cook uh, the vegetables to a softer texture. And those who were edentulous, that means who did not have teeth at all, how to soften or texturize their diet. So these are the processes as a nutritionist, you will be able to enter into different levels at the different time points. Apart from that, as I mentioned to you, and even uh, Mr. Chikai also uh, mentioned to you, that our field is very diverse. We always have to be collaborative. So what we also did was we engaged the oral health center of IMU, the dentistry team, to come in, assess all the elderly, and ensure that those elderly who were, um, um, who were eligible to have a denture we managed to get some resources from the Khazana Fund. See, again, that is another collaborator. So we activated the Khazana Fund, requested if we could get some funds for fixing the dentures of these elderly. And lo and behold, we got them to um, fund this kind of a project. And then the elderly who were completely edentulous, who did not have the teeth, were blessed with a set of dentures. So you see, it was a double-pronged approach. We got the training on the ground. We trained the chef. We trained starting from how to cut the vegetables to how to cook, which part of the vegetable should be cooked first, which next. And then for those who were unable to chew at all, how to texturize the food. Two, we, the dentistry team who came in and who helped us to prepare the dentures and they did an oral health examination for all the elderly. And that's how we improve the overall health status of the elderly. Now, I don't say that you can completely uh, nullify the disease condition they have. But having said that, at least they had a better glucose control. They had better uh, pressure, blood pressure control. And also some of them managed their weight even at that point of time, though they were already in the elderly group. So these are the diverse collaborations that a nutritionist can have and also partner and engage not only with the community leaders at large, but also with other faculties, other discipline and other um, organizations in order to make that approach fulfilling and benefit the overall community. Now, another partnership, which is very interesting, we had with the International Organization of Migration, IOM. What did we do there? So you know that International Organization of Migration generally is a, is a supportive body of um, UN migration. And also it, is, uh, it works with UNCHR. So it works mostly with the refugee population. And in Malaysia, we do have um, uh, quite a Rohingyas, uh, number of Rohingyas as a refugee population. During the Syrian war, we did receive a, a, quite a number of Syrian refugees as well. So what we did at that point of time was 
um, IOM requested us to train their staff on uh, picky eating as well as anemia among this refugee group. And anemia was mostly observed among the adolescent girls in the refugee group and picky eating amongst the younger children in the refugee group. So we went uh, for the, about two to three rounds to train all their staff on how to address picky eaters and also anemia. And we also gave them some positive approaches to feed picky eater, eaters in that community. As you know, the funding is very restricted under um, IOM and uh, they, uh, the, the refugees who come down do not have a, a proper home to stay and uh, they may or may not get two square meals a day as well. But what was important at that point of time was to also educate the funders for their food and their livelihood to provide them with those healthy options rather than giving them foods like fries, like pisang goreng and so on, which may be very filling and cheaper as compared to the other foods. So you can see here, our moderator, Dr. Megan, was also involved in the same project, giving them tips and tricks and training them how to take care of this refugee population. So when we were training the staff, we trained them on nutrition assessment, how to take care, how to measure the baby, what are the scales required, how to take the height and weight. And here Dr. Yang is also explaining as to what was the challenges that she observed when she was counseling the mothers with these young children. So this is how we train the staff. And as a nutritionist, it is very, very important that you need to uh, work with diverse team. So I repeat the word diversity and inclusivity, including everyone for a better life, because all of us have got an equal access um, or equal should be given an equal opportunity for a healthy lifestyle. So now we have been talking about all these um, partnership approaches. So where does it lead to you? Where, what do you get out of it? You might be thinking, are we doing social service only? Or is it limited that in the curriculum we have to only do this? Or is it mandatory that only even without a degree, if you do this um, role of a nutritionist in the community, um, we are good enough? It's not so. Now, what I showed you is already being done by our students, our nutrition students. They're going down because we from the nutrition fraternity, we are for the community. So at any point of time, we have to go down to the community because that is our ultimate goal to change the lifestyle towards a healthy lifestyle in the community. So through these kind of work, you will be getting opportunities for internships as well. You remember Ms. Gillian also mentioned that we are open for internships and most um, of our uh, last um, uh, previous alumni have been offered internship positions at BioLife through Ms. Um, uh, Gillian as well. So you see it can go beyond now. BioLife within Malaysia offers you internship. Even certain other organizations do offer you internships within Malaysia. But sometimes internships are also beyond Malaysia. Now, this is the example where I give you, this is from Sight and Life, and they have, um, all have had advertised their nutrition internship. You see, you can see they have given their deadline. Now, what qualifies you for nutrition internship? All these uh, projects that I showed you earlier was, uh, will be a very, very, uh, will play a very big role in getting you an internship or securing an internship in any of these industry partners or in the overseas partners. So what is important here is that your effort is not limited to community service. In return, you are gaining a very good internship during the, I mean, you can aim for a good internship based on such kind of experiences. But please remember that internship is not just um, you, are, you apply and you get it. They interview you. They also assess what is the previous prior work that you have done that we can engage you, that you will be helpful for our project as well. So the projects that I showed you earlier 
can be a stepping stone for your future internship. And these future internship can ultimately lead you to your goal of a job as well. So do not think that these partnerships and nutrition is just for doing some kind of a charity business. No, it is a learning process. Even today, I am learning. Even today, all our other nutrition colleagues are still learning on the ground because no new problem, no problem is the same as the previous problem. Every problem is unique. And through these unique problems, we get to learn more and we garner more experiences so that we can make a meaningful change to this uh, planet. So with that, I think I close my um, presentation. I'm more than happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Uh, over to you, Dr. Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Snigda. Wonderful work. You can see over the span of 10, 12 years, yeah, the cumulative um, experience, uh, impact that uh, the team yeah, brings to uh, directly to the community. All right. Thank you so much again for sharing you know, uh, all this inspiring. Hopefully, yeah, all our audience today uh, after this session uh, heard from these uh, three inspiring speakers that they, they really you know, have a glimpse of... Uh, uh, what nutritionists can do, well, what is actually uh, needed in the community and also hopefully yeah, we manage to convince them to consider a career in nutrition. All right, so we are almost coming to the end of the sessions. Uh, we are now opening the Q&A uh, uh, sessions for those who are uh, still, you know, have uh, some pondering questions or would like to know more, do type your questions in the Q&A panel box, yeah? So let's start with the Q&A questions. We do have a couple, you know, that are very interesting and, and actually um, shows yeah, that they, they, they really uh, follow and, and really are benefited from uh, your sharing the speakers today. Let's start the first one with Ms. Gillian. Hi. Yep. Hi, hello. Yeah, just wanted to uh, let you have this question and see how, uh, you know, you bring more insight yeah, for the audience. How do you see the roles of nutritionists in shaping for a healthier nation? Okay, I would say that as a nutritionist, perhaps we need to um, willingly and readily to walk into the community. Okay, uh, after we have uh, gained all the knowledge from the university, from our lecturers, so we have to benefit this uh, and also translate this message uh, to our uh, community, to our general uh, population as well as we can. Okay, hopefully with this message that we pass around when we walk around to the neighborhood, we are able to uh, so-called inspire and also empower mm. them, empower them to, to take up those or maybe to understand the needs mm. uh, to live healthily. Mm. Okay. Mm. With such, I think with such the knowledge uh, that we consistently to communicate with the community, uh, I guess um, the it can also be benefit to the nation as well because if the community is healthy, Correct. then Correct. Uh, it will contribute to that. You yes, know, overall, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Healthy if nation. Were, mm. Healthy nation, and also it can perhaps the MOH will be ha having lesser, <laughs> lesser burden cost of uh, true, cost of true. Living, uh, to, to really uh, contribute those funding mm -hmm. to other aspects for the uh, nation development. So, I guess the most important thing is the, our readiness to walk mm. into the uh, our community to share with them our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Miss Chilin. We do have a uh, one uh, for Mr. Ng. Um, you share so much of the work that has been done by Ministry of Health and, and you know, uh, the state of uh, Selangor and, and many other uh, periphery health clinics. How else we can uh, reach out more? To, uh, to Malaysians yeah, to, to promote healthy lifestyle, healthy eating and, and all. Let's hear from Mr. Ng. Um, um, Dr. Megan, you also mentioned that uh, we did so much. Um, basically, <laughs> basically a, lot, a lot of things, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing that by myself. Mm. Okay? Um, individually, uh, our, our energy, our 
Mm-hmm. Our capability is limited. Um, so um, Ministry of Health currently, we have like near to 500 nutritionists mm. in service in total mm. for the whole country. So uh, it's, it's a is 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 a collaborative, is yeah. collaborative mm-hmm. effort, and um definitely um uh, Ministry of Health we have our limitation, especially uh we uh, a lot a lot of government rules a lot of um like uh in terms of um uh Apartments limitations like. mm-hmm. la. and when we want mm-hmm. to spend money we can't spend this way we must spend according to the procedure kind of things. Which um this we must have this because mm-hmm. this kind of procedures is to putting is things to in prevent, place mm-hmm. pre- prevent us from from corruption and all that right so um so we have our limitations so I believe I always believe in collaboration with mm-hmm. others with like collaboration right? yeah collaboration mm-hmm. with academia with universities collaboration yeah. with um corporate like BioLife or any mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. companies or, mm-hmm. collaboration with NGOs mm-hmm. um I, I believe this is the what currently the best way for mm-hmm. us to reach out more true, because true. each of our collaborator we will have um, different different expertise, yes, yeah, different and also pathway. bringing different resources, yeah, to to be be you know to to help the the program to be much more successful and bigger impact, yeah. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Mister. We have one question uh, that very interested in your YSLE program. Could you help us to uh, provide a bit more information? Is it subsidized or funded? How about the living expenses in the US for the period that you are there? Um, YCLE is fully funded by the uh, Department of State of United States like, of USA. Okay, um, so it's fully funded and um, everything is, uh, not to say everything is paid off, but um, we receive some stipend. Wow. Um, 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 if you are not going, doing your Christmas shopping or what, it should be sufficient. Uh, this is what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of managing the, the uh, expenditure. Lah, huh? So I think uh, uh, that's really good news. Yeah, I think the, the exposure and uh, that you bring and, and for them to be aware of such program and how then these young future leaders can develop further develop their uh, leadership skills and, and networking yeah, within the uh, international region. All right. Um, we do have two questions relating to program that I can actually help to take it up. Yeah. So how do I study a nutrition? How do I get to study nutrition in IMU? We are actually, um, you know, our enrollment is actually for September this year, right? For student or, or audience that asked uh, this question, um, do yeah, uh, be in touch with our admission uh, admission uh, colleagues or you can apply yeah, through our um, website. Uh, we are still open for this year's uh, intake yeah we will start uh, in september uh, late september uh, 2022 for our this year's uh, intake all right we only have one intake but two enrollment date in a year all right and our IMU programs uh, is a three year program and if um, you are interested to do a short stint yeah, uh, abroad, you can also consider our credit transfer program to Dickens University Australia, right? So on that path, you will uh, graduate with the Dickens uh, degree, all right? So we do offer these two pathways that you can actually come in. Uh, like what uh, Mr. Ng has shared, yeah? you need to have that um, uh, formal uh, training yeah? uh, in nutrition to be eligible uh, to practice and also to register as a nutritionist under the allied health professional. All right. Um, the next question is, um, is it compulsory for uh, students, I guess, or nutrition graduate to work with the um, government like the medical graduates? Huh? We do not have at the moment such stipulation, but um, the mandatory placement yeah, are, are embedded within your three-year course that you finish before you graduate. Okay, so for IMU program, your semester uh, six and also your short semester, yeah, your final year, the third year, will be uh, doing full internship uh, uh, displacements uh, sites that we place the students in Ministry of Health for their uh, mandatory exposure uh, in health clinics. You know, the students will be dealing with um, uh, pregnant women, children, uh, you know, prevention of NCDs, uh, non-communicable diseases, uh, dealing with elderly, you know, many 
many, many, uh, uh, you know, pockets and, and also all walks of uh, community. And they moved on to a 16 weeks of um, uh, internship in other uh, organization or institutions. Uh, this would be um, a choice uh, of, for the students, yeah, whether they are much more inclined towards community work or industry, food uh, supplement or, or um, you know, uh, nutrition communication or some even venture into sports nutrition area. Okay, so it's actually, we do have a list of our partners that students can opt from there. Or if you wish to venture um, beyond that, yeah, like what Dr. Snigda has mentioned, at international collaboration, international exposure for internship, you are much more welcome. So at the moment, you will finish uh, everything within the three years and there's no mandatory sub, um, you know, requirement to serve uh, the ministry. Uh, after you graduate, you're free to uh, opt to 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 uh, to, to um, you know uh, or your career in whichever aspects that uh, you would like to do. All right, so that hopefully helps a bit uh, to to uh, help you yeah to imagine and visualize uh, how the uh, the training and also um, your graduation and also your practice later on. All right. Um, Okay, maybe this question is for all the speakers. Besides working in a community, what other areas a nutritionist can work? Who would like to go first? <laughs> Dr. Snigda, maybe can can uh, okay. share? Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. And I <laughs> yes, yes. Say, they have think very, you know, very <laughs> far ahead. <laughs> very well thought through question as well. Well, you have seen one side was the industry. The other side, you have seen the ministry, but you can see the broad scope under the ministry as well. The other, the third angle was the academia side. So you can work as an academic, you can work as a researcher, you can also work under other uh, wellness uh, companies, which are now coming up, for example, at fitness centers. Many right. NGOs are hiring nutritionists now. Mm -hmm. Many of the, um, uh, uh, what to say, the, the digital health services are hiring uh, nutri nutritionists, which was not heard of earlier mm. prior COVID. Now, welcome to COVID and welcome <laughs> to digital health. That's the biggest transformation that COVID has brought, uh, brought uh, right. us through. And that's the future of technology as well. We have to embrace technology at any point of time. We may go to the community, but again, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. will be some element of technology used. Mm -hmm. So the scope is very wide. It is mm -hmm. very wide. It's not restricted. So it depends on where your passion lies. For example, if you're interested in sports, we have students placed at ISN as well. So sports nutrition is another area which you can take up. Uh, I would rather leave the platform to Gillian and Chika to add on to this list. Thank you. One of the aspects that I can think of is, uh, I guess, uh, more uh, fundamental base. You can be the nutritionist for your home, <laughs> for, your, <laughs> for your family. Absolutely. <laughs> because uh, uh, to me, I guess, uh, none of my uh, uh, family members uh, know, know more about the nutrition. Usually, um, I guess, generally, people uh, live to, uh, eat to live. Eat to live. Okay, this concept actually also apply to my family member before I really uh, go to mm -hmm. study for, mm -hmm. for nutrition course. Okay, mm -hmm. and then after that, I share with my parents. Okay, so the, the nutrition knowledge that I, 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 embed, I mean, I share with them and then I empower them some of the basic knowledge. So they uh, started to practice the mm -hmm. nutrition, uh, good nutrition and also the good mm -hmm. healthy lifestyle. Mm. So I guess uh, I mean being the agent change from home, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It started mm. from home, like Dr. Skinda said. It started mm. from home, but of course for my parents, probably uh, I will not say too late, but it's still being on time for mm. them to, to have the change. Mm. Okay, that is one of the way <laughs> I can I think I can share with uh, more yeah. the audience. Okay, I think just maybe just to add on, nutritionists, uh, you may see them uh, on the frontliners. Yeah? The frontliners nutritionists, for example, Mr. Ng, you would have uh, seen them either at the community or, or you know, when you visited uh, health clinics. Yeah? So like what he, she's, he said, you know, we have 500, 600 nutritionists uh, as frontliners uh, uh, 
uh, with the ministry. You have also another, um, I think 60, 70% nutritionists are actually working behind the scene, you know, you may not have seen them. Where are they? They are actually in uh, any of the food company, uh, any of the nutrition company, nutrition related company, food and beverages company, any uh, company yeah, of that providing services that is uh, related to nutrition, towards wellness, towards health. Right, so they, they they do hire nutritionists, yeah. So examples like um, uh, you know, uh, uh milk companies, you know, uh, um, even to confectionery companies. Uh, we do have probiotics, health supplements, nutrition supplement company, wellness industry, yeah. Uh, be it in diagnostic centers, be it in um, uh, weight management centers, and and like what Dr. Stigda mentioned, yeah. Um, in the sports area, as a researcher, as an academy, you see the list go on and on, you know. And what she mentioned, uh, in the recent years, uh, this um emerging areas yeah, of digitalization has opened up more position for digital consultation, digital nutrition services, um, and also yeah, nutrition communication. You see the young um, uh, leaders and the youngsters today, yeah, they are very much more interested uh, towards um, uh, you know, uh, nutrition, uh, dissemination of nutrition education through media platforms, through videos, through, uh, you know, um, uh, content expert, yeah, in terms of uh, uh, materials development that they actually offered through either their websites, through their, um, you know, social medias and influencers and, and all that, right? And of course, like what you hear the, from uh, Mr. Ng, yeah, the, 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 uh, the strong uh, five 600 nutritionists that are serving as frontliners. So you see that, you know, it's actually very diverse, very broad scope, like what Dr. Snita say, you can actually, um, um, you know, depending on your passion, depending on your interests, there are actually many many areas to explore all right so very good questions yeah that are coming um yeah um Dr. Yes, Nagan, yes, I, I would like to add on this also Mr. um don't forget about our research team correct um, we, got, we got a number of nutritionists are actually working mm. in research and also um our international organization like un agencies unicef mm -hmm. who UNHCR and all that. And also currently the blooming one will be like the, the personalized nutrition kind of correct, approach. Correct. Um they, they they study your gene and, and tailor meet your, your diet kind of things. Mm -hmm. They need to consultancy, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As well. A mm -hmm. lot more. You, you, you actually, um <laughs> actually actually um like top glove group. Correct. A company, correct. a company um exporting glove, one of the largest exporter in the country. Um, they have, uh, if not mistaken, five nutritionists. Yes, a big team of nutritionists. Yeah, HR. All to right. look after so. their boss's health. So, <laughs> bosses and also employees, so, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> so nutrition, we are not, not only in health sector, we are in HR, we are in correct, everywhere, correct. actually. And thank we you, also thank have you. freelance mm -hmm. nutritionists. Mm -mm. Thank you for adding. I, I almost forget that because I, I shouldn't forget that because uh, Top Golf actually have our uh, uh, hired our alumni, yeah, our there. We actually have a couple there that uh, they are spearheading the, the wellness program, you know, at work, wellness program at workplace. This is also something that is emerging. A lot of our MNCs, yeah, that is actually very interested uh, uh, and ready to invest, um, put, putting resources into health uh, of their employees, all right? So because uh, health is equivalence also to productivity and that actually brings down to more profit yeah the the, the healthier you know, your employees are the, the better and productive they will be right so that is also um really coming up and, and really opening up you know like uh, like what uh, you know they have a big team of nutritionists uh, in top club just top club alone uh, and you have many other mncs that are ready uh, going towards uh, that um, aspects all right uh one uh, question for dr snigda uh, working in the community is very rewarding. Doctor seems to be very passionate about this. How can someone be involved in such projects? Is it through ministry or any other avenue that can you advise? Okay, it's a good question. Um, avenues are many because sometimes uh, we, we, we do uh, seek for help. But one thing we must remember, we are going as responsible healthcare mm. 
professionals. Mm. So when these uh, communities approach, they generally approach either through ministry or they approach through academic institutions because somebody has to validate the person mm. who mm. is going to work for the community. All right. So coming to the elderly home project, uh, unfortunately, we had to stop it because of mm -hmm. COVID and also to look into the safety of the elderly. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can um, reactivate them maybe mm -hmm. in another one year's time. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it has to be, you have to be attached to the institution. That is for sure. Because we do not want anybody to go yes. and talk about nutrition. You need to be properly qualified mm -hmm. to, to work uh, in the area of nutrition, apply the knowledge learned. Um, I know nutri everybody talks of nutrition these days. You go to a shopping mall also, you find multicolored bottles there and they keep telling you, giving you a photocopy of a paper saying, oh, if you drink this, you will get cured of this. Where's the evidence? When yeah. you ask them for the evidence, they say, oh, it's already tried. My mother did other day they give you those things but we don't consider that as an evidence mm -mm, mm -mm. it is not All right like what uh, miss Gillian also mentioned that they are why are they hiring um, students for internship from academic institutions because they know they have been trained well trained yeah in knowledge mm -hmm. so which can be applied to mm -hmm, their mm -hmm. industry so right. and they don't take you just like that just because you belong to IMU we can just pick you up no they do conduct a very very intensive interview to mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. the students uh, knowledge level mm -hmm. um, competency level. yeah mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and also whether the student has got good critical thinking and problem solving you may know the knowledge but you may not know how to apply it Correct. so coming back to the question on elderly we only go through those elderly homes approach generally through mm -hmm. the ministry or through academic institutions mm -hmm. to ensure they are getting the right uh, people. Correct, correct. However, if you want to just go for volunteering, for example, give them a bath, color their hair, you are most welcome. You to can approach in, right? them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. can approach them directly. Mm -hmm. Hope I have answered okay. the question. Yes, yes. I think that also uh, answering question from Precious, yeah, that uh, about the elderly uh, project that Dr. Sniga has um, uh, responded to. All right. Okay. Um, all right. This is one question about internship. I think the, the students are really interested, yeah, how, how transitioning to the real world setting. Uh, why is having an internship important? What do the students learn there? Oh, everything. <laughs> because um, I think it's also a platform to consolidate their learning. Uh, it is also a, a, an avenue yeah, for them to apply uh, what they have learned in the classroom to now in a real world beyond classroom. So some of the things that are you studied theory, but now when you are dealing with the real world, you know, the real individual, they will come with a lot more other challenges, uh, reality, and that you have to consider. So it is very important and it is also um, uh, 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 an avenue yeah, for the students to adapt to the real world, right? So, you know, when you're in the real world, whether it is in ministry, um, or industry, there's a lot other um, expectations other than just your, you know, your having your knowledge or technical competency. Yeah, it is about your time management. It's about your people management. It is about your project management. All these are uh, opportunities for you to uh, brush your skills, to know where you are, what are the gaps, uh, how can you improve before you enter the real uh, workforce setting. Yes, yeah? so to us, it is actually a mandatory and and and, and very important. Uh, uh, part of your learning and also being a training to, to be a competent nutritionist. All right, so hope that answers that. Um, one more question. How do I know I'm suitable to be a nutritionist? <laughs> Very interesting. Do your, that, did it came to your mind when you choose a career earlier? So I think I can take, or take this question. Um, first thing is reassess your a passion. Mm -hmm. Do you have a passion in nutrition? Mm -hmm. Are you able to work in a collaborative manner mm -hmm. with different partners? They may not be all nutritionists. One all can right. be an engineer. You may have to work with engineers. You may have to mm -hmm. work with nurses. You mm -hmm. may have to work with a, a, a community leader and so on. See whether you have that passion. Also check whether 
you have good communication skills because being a nutritionist is a pr kind of job public relations job please do not forget that you may be having the knowledge but if you cannot communicate your knowledge is only restricted to yourself so how will you change the other person uh, who needs help apart from that you need to have the attitude of problem solving mm -hmm. there is a problem you may not have the answers for all problems mm -hmm. we fully agree we are all humans but you should know where to search for a solution who to approach can give you a, a a solution so these are certain things which are innate qualities within every human being it all depends upon um, your passion if you think that through nutrition i can do this 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 and i can i'm also interested to learn higher mm -hmm. and also go beyond my my um, comfort zone then mm. this is a job for you this mm. is a scope for you thank you so, thank you dr yeah. sida this is something in short ms jilia anything you like to add on and mr al when you ask me about this question i think <laughs> I, I I guess in my in my uh, earlier of the sharing session I mm. already uh, mentioned before, uh yeah I I actually wanted to venture into healthcare. Mm. It is just the that passion. is whether the passion is that yeah, the passion to serve and to help up uh, mm. others. Mm. Then um it it also comes to a uh, inspiration the the one of the statement that my 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 uh, senior uh, share with me. So mm. we. As a nutritionist, we are even treating people beforehand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are, we are uh, managing the prevention. So, yeah, uh, I guess it is the passion that Dr. Snida mm -hmm. mentioned. It is quite uh, important. Yeah, important, mm -hmm. yeah, important. Uh, that is the gems that uh, you, if you think that you want to be a uh, become a nutritionist. Mr. Ang, anything to add on from uh, your I, past I, experience? I. Agree absolutely um, for both <laughs> both the answers lah. For me, it's mm. not suitable or not, mm. but it's you want or don't want. Betul, betul, betul. Uh, truly, truly, I don't. Yeah, because because um yeah, different people have will have different character. Mm. Um, if if you are outgoing, you like to talk with people. You you be a community nutritionist. You go mm -hmm. out, you reach out to people. Mm -hmm. If you like feel shy, you like to work with the laptop or instrument. Maybe you can be a researcher. You can be a food scientist. Mm -hmm. Sit in the lab. Um, um, invent new um healthy, healthy ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So so nutritionist, the scope is too wide. And yeah. I believe we can we can we can we can we can we'll get find everybody. something suitable for anyone. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. everyone. And the thing is, um, nutrition degree is not like medical degree. If you study medical degree, then you give up half halfway. You like wasted. Mm. Nutrition degree, like what Jillian said just Very now, you kan? you can use it at your home. You can use it. <laughs> yourself so it's not a waste and with a nutrition degree you want to be a banker also can you can you want to be to be a marketer a purchaser mm -hmm. buyer mm -hmm. everything also can so, yeah i think it's a passport lah huh? it's a passport if you you know suddenly have a change of heart and passion uh, it doesn't uh, stop you from venturing uh, other things like that that's what uh, mr ng trying to uh, elude to yeah um i think um you know one one is a great one great thing about this uh, nutrition nutritionist yeah is we love our foods you know that i think that is also something in, you know, we have to recognize the importance of foods as part of our life and a part of our culture, right? Um, so be interested and in, and in, you know, loving your food is I think is important. It's fundamental if you tasuka makan or don't like or don't know, yeah, how you want to um have that passion to to bring a change in people's life, yeah. So hope that answers uh the the question. Um. The other two, um, I'm an Australian student interested in studying in IMU for the inbound mobility. Can I do internship like the ones mentioned? Okay, this is a very specific. Uh, can I request that uh, the um, the audience uh, or the student be in touch with me? Right, I will type my uh, email or also you can reach out to the IMU uh, start uh, at start at IMU so that uh, we can actually help you out to sort this uh, at, at, at a much more personal level. All right. Um, is there any organization or that offer internship related to maternal and child, whether it is government and private? So many. <laughs> so all our, uh, I think half, 
okay, half of our list are relating to the younger population that are very much uh, interested in, in maternal and child health because we believe, yeah, the, like what Dr. Snigda uh, mentioned, the first 1,000 days that is so important yeah, that can actually um, influence yeah, uh, or, or determines yeah, the, the uh, individual's health later in the adulthood life. Okay, so many. Okay, let's be in touch. Uh, all right, that uh, if you like to find out more about our partners. All right, um, I have done this and I have uh, done this. All right. Um, okay. Right. I think that's all our questions for today. Uh, maybe one last one that I saw as I scroll down. How? Um, what are the opportunity for international students to be placed in the nutrition industry in Malaysia? Maybe Ms. Jillian would like to uh, help us with that. Is there any requirement that we are only hiring Malaysians? And I know so Dr. Snigda can add on to it because, you know, uh, being in Malaysia for more than 15 years. Over to you. Yes. I will say that Mega Bala, uh, I mean, for the internship in Mega Bala, we didn't restrict any uh, mm. uh, any city. Whether internship uh, or hiring, right? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It is just that some, because we are working in team, not only one nutritionist that serves the whole company. So definitely there is an opportunity, all right? So if let's say we are uh, hiring or even uh, expanding, then let's uh, stay tuned for the vacancy position, okay? Yeah, I think um, uh, what Ms. Gillian mentioned is true for other industries as well. Um, some industries, uh, they, they, their advertisement itself mentions whether it is only open to local uh, students or the uh, Malaysian students only, or whether it is, if it is not mentioned, international students can also apply. Again, Application does not translate 100% into acquiring the position because you need to qualify and prove yourself that you will be beneficial to that company and it will enhance uh, not only the company's image, but also your learning. So you need to be well prepared for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I think uh, so far, uh, we do have international students uh, within the program and they are now uh, already uh, almost finishing. So we don't have, uh, we have not faced any challenges sure. in whether securing uh, internships uh, for, for them, right? And like what uh, rightly uh, mentioned by Dr. Snigda, I think in terms of hiring, if there is any stipulation that they require certain nationality, then they will uh, put it in the uh, recruitment. If it's uh, no mention, then I think it's open for anyone who meets the criteria and the requirement. All right. I think we are coming to the end of the session. Thank you so much. So many questions that uh, came in. And, and also, you know, uh, I really hope yeah, that we have uh, made uh, uh, an influence in their career, uh, you know, decision making and also yeah, uh, consideration to um, consider uh, this nutrition as a rewarding careers. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Right. Um, we do have our open day coming up, right? Uh, if you feel, feel free to, to uh, walk in anytime and make appointment with um, our uh, marketing colleagues if you like to have a campus tour or be in touch with the faculty. Um, if you, uh, you know, would like to have some counseling session or more information about the program. Thank you so much. I wish you have a pleasant Saturday and a weekend ahead. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.